when I say this word, I flash back the feeling how thirsty I was for the dreams I had. Hope is actually what I named my first art studio in my hometown, Morogoro. This was way back when I was 16. Oh gosh, I feel so old right now. <laughs> it all started when I moved to a new school. I made a poster of an art fair. My art teacher, Mrs. Griffith, looked at my art and told me that it was very good and called me an artist. It was for the first time that someone described me. It warmed my heart. With Mrs. Griffith praised, I believed that I could become an artist. But I just needed a place to create. I was well known of being so clumsy that I could not stay five minutes on the table without tipping over my cup of tea. And definitely my mom wouldn't handle acrylic paints on a carpet. My dad is a civil engineer who'd spend weeks away from home living in a caravan. From time to time, would buy a new one, and the old one would just lie around on the backyard. One of those caravans would make a perfect studio. But in order to get it, I needed to prove to my parents that I was serious about my art. But I had no equipment, nothing at all. This was just my first test of creativity. The only two items that I found was a glass mirror and a golden spray can. I took them and kept it in my room and stared at them for two days. And finally, it was beautiful. Unfortunately, I have no longer the peace. So you just have to believe me, it was beautiful. <laughs> I can assure you that my parents believed it and told me that I could use the caravan and become an artist, and my mom could keep her clean carpet. I was delighted, but still, I had no equipment, nothing at all. I had to make a choice. I had one thing in value, a pair of gold earrings that my dad bought for me. As I pounded my lack of art supply and ability to get them, I kept asking, were those earrings more important to me than my art? I knew they weren't. Selling those earrings was one of the most proudest and least saddest moments. But cash allowed me to have everything I wanted and needed. Getting art space and art supply was only the beginning of my long and difficult journey. I grew up in an era where it's not uncommon for an Arab girl to stop school when she turns 16. With this contact, my parents were not the only one raising me, but the whole community. Elders from society thought that education is not important for a girl. Because, God forbid, She'll be a feminist. <laughs> from Taj Mahal in India to eye-catching dome stretches from Syria to Bosnia to Persia lands, it's clear that I'm not the first Muslim artist. We go way back over a thousand years. What makes it hard for me is that misconception that Muslims cannot paint humans or any being with soul, because we were taught that only God can do that. I don't want to be mistaken by trying to bring my paintings to actual life. I only create an abstract, an image of life, not life itself. Many people in my religion do not see this. But you don't have to stop to art because of this belief. After moving to Hope, I thrived as an artist. For three years, I created and sold pieces and experimented myself with different medias, from clay, sculptures, canvases with banana leaves. At 19, I met Muhammad, who saw my art and said, I love to see a woman do what they're good at. 
like Mrs. Griffith's validation of my art. I said to myself, he is the one. <laughs> <laughs> On a honeymoon in Seashell, I met an old man in his souvenir shop where he handmade very beautiful artistic crafts. One thing that caught my eye about this old man was the most unique necklace that he was wearing. He told me to stop stare at it and to look them in his eyes. When I asked him why, he did not reply. But instead, he asked me, what was your dream? I looked at my husband and smiled. And I told them that I wanted to become a known artist. My partner didn't smile back. But the old man grinned. He asked us if he could take a picture with us and gave me his email address and told me to write to him. Out to the beach, out to the shop, to the beach. I was still beaming because a new person believed in me. When or without a word, my husband took that piece of paper with an old man email address and threw it in the ocean. At that time, I felt, I felt broken and lost. I chose not to fight back, but I've lost hope. From that day on, when I did a paint, my painting, I would always hide them. A year later, I gave birth to my princess, my first child. We gave her the name Jules because she was so precious to us. Years passed, I gave my second, my third. Without encouragement or support, my art felt wayside. Back in my parents' house, I'd always get support from my sisters, and if money that I needed, it would always be there for my finance support. I grew up less believing myself, and I've lost sense of motivation. After my second child was born, I got opportunity to work with a man who wanted to display my art in a gallery. When I told my husband, he told me I had to choose him or my art. He feared that my success would lead me to forget my responsibility as a wife and a mother of his children. A chance would be given to me again and again over the years. I would always choose him. I would always sit and think of hope. My Jews grew up and started to be curious of everything I did. She would tell me I'm her role model. When she said that, I was so happy with myself. I really wanted her to look up to me. When you're young, you're full of dreams. When you grow old, the responsibilities such as marriage and being a mother and all those life duties break us and we lose our hope and dreams. I don't want Jules to, get, to lose up her dreams. I try to be a great mother by encouraging her. When she's 14 and she's trying to be, an, she's becoming a young adult, her passion to pursue her dreams as a writer and a poet are becoming stronger. I knew then, at that point, she has been blessed with the ability to create her own form of art. And now it's my turn to support her and nurture her talent. In order to support my daughter, I needed to put myself first, to love myself a little more. We women are told that once we're married, our job is to love and look after our husband and children. Most women like me forget ourselves as we live our life as a good wife and a mother. I try to become a great mother by encouraging her. I try to support her and nurture her talent. So I decided to face my husband. And that strength, that new form strength, I finally faced my husband, set him down, upload my feeling. And I told him, I choose my art. He saw the fire in my eyes, heard the passion and frustration in my voice. He and I knew both that if he would not support me now, 
we would be lost. He came down, looked at me, and his admiration for me tripled, and he has been my biggest support ever since. Rupi Kaur said, what a greatest lesson a woman should learn is that since day one, she had everything within herself. It's just the world that convinced her she did not. Before my art room was a dark and isolated place with no kids allowed. Now it's a family room. I can even paint in front of my kids that I couldn't do it before. My husband and society convinced me that I was not good enough. But all I had to do is search within me. Motivation does not always come easily. You just need to get started. And motivation comes with action itself. After I talked to my husband, I grabbed my paintbrush and, stood, and I started to paint what everything in me for all the women, including myself, for the women who had no voice, I painted silence. For the women who are drowning with no power, I painted mixed emotions. For the women who deserve more care, I painted careful. For the albinos, Fearing for their lives, hiding their hearts, I painted the hidden heart. For the women struggling with their identity, I painted, you don't have to be perfect to be amazing. I was letting myself free. And finally, I made a painting for everyone who loved me. And I called it, Help Me Fly. And now I am flying. This January, I applied and I was selected to present my country at the Z Art Exhibition in Dubai. I was not only proud because of the recognition of my art, but because I demonstrated to my daughter that you don't have to lose up your dreams just because you're a woman and society will always have opinion on you. My son made me a trophy of me being chosen at the Z Art Exhibition that made me cry. And my daughter made a clay of us looking at the stars, which presents our dreams, which can be as numerous as the stars. I first felt validation with Mrs. Griffith praised and others encouraging me. When that well motivation dried up, so did my dream. I gave up so easily on the face of discouragement, in the face of my duty, being a wife, a mother, and a Muslim. So many of us, especially women, feel that we need encouragement or support in order to achieve anything. But the success I found within myself didn't come because I started to get praised again. I had to work and search within, my, within, within myself. Did I start to get praised again from my kids? Unfortunately, so many of us who have never been told. Today is the day. If you have a dream, go for it. The time is now. I'm here to tell you, just do it. Don't let anyone tell you. Go for your dreams. This is for the young women, Mtuara, Jombe, Mwanza, or even in Zanzibar, sitting on her bed in her room, finishing off her last remaining MB on YouTube, listening to me, empowering to take step and more father step. Thank you.